All right, hello everyone. It has obviously been a long time since we did one of these, but as it is about to become 2020, here we are now with my 2020 energy and resource prediction set, our single year 2020 outlook, a total 2020s decade ahead outlook will be coming out soon as well. Now these predictions are for things that are variable, not for things that are basically set that we all know are just going to happen anyways, barring, you know, any asteroid impacts or nuclear war or something. We will quickly go through some of those at the end of the video, but going down the sets of 2020 predictions, we'll start with U.S. oil production this year or this past year, depending on which one of these years you're watching this in. It got up to 12.8 million barrels per day like I expected. It actually ended up getting up to 12.9 for a couple weeks, but then it fell back down to 12.8 most recently. I am expecting it before the end of 2020 to get up to 13.6. And of course, I'm expecting the majority of that, as it has been for the past several years now, to primarily just come from the Permian Shale. A small bit will probably still come from the Gulf of Mexico, but primarily it's still all going to be coming from the Permian Shale. The Permian Shale of which I expect during this coming year, 2020, to exceed 5.2 million barrels per day. It'll probably hit 5.3 as well, but I'm at least primarily confident it's, it's definitely going to exceed 5.2 before the end of 2020. 2020's U.S. oil production growth being less than that of 2019. As growth in U.S. oil production has begun its slowdown, and that slowdown is only going to intensify. As with the exception of a few uptick weeks here or there, U.S. active drilling rig count is steadily dropping. As over the course of the past year, U.S. active drilling rig count decreased by almost 300 rigs. And if that continues on, if, you know, over the course of 2020, it drops by another 300 rigs, then obviously the pattern of U.S. production growth is only going in one direction. All right, U.S. natural gas consumption specifically regarding U.S. natural gas consumption by natural gas-fired power plants. During the coming summer of 2020, I expect during the hottest points at least one week to appear where U.S. natural gas consumption by natural gas-fired power plants hits or exceeds 49 billion cubic feet per day. Because as the summers are getting hotter, electricity demand from air conditioning is obviously continuing to rise, and the U.S. population is still rising, so that's also providing a demand increase. And the U.S. has been abandoning coal, like California has been abandoning everything that tastes good. And in its abandonment of coal, the U.S. has replaced almost all of that gap with new natural gas-fired power plants in their place. So with several new natural gas-fired power plants being thrown up in the U.S. every month, the effect of that is all but obvious. Now, under the umbrella of U.S. oil consumption, one of the specific products within that U.S. gasoline demand, I believe this year at its height, is going to increase again, obviously, and break its record again. Specifically, this year, I do believe it's going to either hit or at least come within 0 0.02 of 10 million barrels per day. So last year, U.S. gasoline consumption had hit a new record at just under 9.9, .9, at 9.899. This year, 2019, it got up to just under 9.94. So this year, 2020, I'm expecting it to get just up within the range of 10. So probably between 9.98 and 10 million barrels per day. World oil demand. I do not see the enormous slowdown that many people are expecting. A lot of people are expecting it to increase by less than 1 million barrels per day. I think it's still going to increase by more than that. It most recently had gotten up to 101.7, and I believe this coming year it is going to make it up to or over 103. Oil demand growth is not stopping. It will eventually in a number of years. Once the second and likely final global oil production peak comes, uh, the prices will kill it off. But everyone seems to think that uh, electric vehicles were going to do that. They're not. China, obviously, is going to continue to grow in their demand. This coming year in 2020, I absolutely expect China 
to at least once probably in one of their monthly averages exceed 15 million barrels per day of oil demand. As they made it up into the 14s last year in 2018 and this year 2019, they've gone up over 14 million several times. So this coming year, they're definitely hitting 15 million. And also oil demand related on a global scale in terms of global jet fuel demand. I'm expecting the world to either tie or just exceed the previous record. In terms of weekly averages, the highest I'd seen yet has been 6.7 million barrels per day. As global jet fuel consumption does have a wide variability, or at least a somewhat wide variability, depending on season, time of year, even which part of the month within individual months. Oil discoveries during 2020, I expect to probably fall a bit short of what we had this year in 2019, as the exploration uh, spending surge we had from that brief price recovery for a year basically wears off. I still expect it to be higher than uh, the lows of the previous years, but most likely I'm expecting it to uh, not meet this year's number which I believe at this point is just short of 11 billion barrels discovered up to this point. So this coming year, 2020, I'm expecting oil discoveries globally to probably come in between 8 and 10. Copper prices this year, I do believe, are finally going to go back up over $3 per pound as global copper production from copper mines around the world over the course of this year, 2019, was basically flat in comparison to 2018, so it was a flat year production-wise. Silver in the supply deficit that's been going on for several years now since 2015. I'm expecting silver during 2020 to get up over $20 per ounce again, probably up and down over it way more than once, in the same way silver behaved with $17 and $18 per ounce this year, as silver inventories are probably uh, going to slip under 300 million ounces in storage. Rare earth metal prices uh, have been decreasing for several months, ever since a number of uh, large rare earth mines reopened in China, but all those mines did restart their operations several months ago. So with that reintroduction of supply to the global chain, that uh, caused rare earth prices to begin tumbling down for the last several months. I do believe that's going to continue, at least for the first few months into 2020, but during 2020, I do expect that to bottom out and for the prices to then turn around and begin gradually increasing again. As their various sources of demand obviously continue ever increasing, everything from LED lights to computer screens, to the electronics themselves, to electric vehicle motors. So I absolutely expect that pattern to reverse itself. Nickel prices had climbed up pretty quickly this year as expected. However, then unexpectedly, at the end of the year, they dropped back down quite a ways before then turning their brain back on and beginning to climb back up again. And not just because of it, but especially in light of it, the, uh, the upcoming Indonesia export cutoff, they're going to cut off all their, uh, their nickel exports to the outside world. Nickel prices, I do believe, are going to resurge again, and this year probably get up to uh, $20,000 per ton as nickel demand is only ever rising, not just from increasing steel production in rising nations as they continue to uh, advance and build modern infrastructure, but also actually in electric and even regular hybrid vehicles, as EV batteries, even though they're called lithium-ion batteries, lithium barely makes up any of the weight of the battery. By weight, actually, they're mostly nickel and manganese. Platinum, as global production from platinum group metal mines remains flat, again, as it has consistently, and as platinum group metal demand continues increasing, I'm expecting platinum prices to break up back over $1,000 per ounce, possibly get up to $1,100, and alongside it, palladium almost certainly going up over $2,000, and I think potentially creeping up towards $2,400, and their third counterpart, rhodium, I don't know for sure whether I feel like it's going to break its record. It's probably going to keep its dip then rebound, dip then rebound uh, pattern each time rebounding higher than the last time, and it's probably at least going up over 8,000. All right, that's it for my energy and resource predictions. Now, as I said at the beginning, we'll also quickly go through some uh, going tos or things that aren't predictions of anybody because they're just things that are going to happen, period. In 2020, we all know 
world population is going to hit 7.8 billion people. China's population will hit and exceed 1.4 billion people. The number of cars or personal automobiles on Earth will hit and exceed 1.2 billion. That's not including, you know, buses, construction vehicles, and all kinds of other stuff. All right, that's that for 2020 energy and resource predictions and going to happen events as well. So please like the video if you enjoyed listening. Hit the bell and subscribe if you're not already. For anyone who wants to help me out at all, my PayPal link is in the description down below. The deadline has already passed for getting your name carved into a giant chunk of coal for this Christmas. If you donate uh, anything from now onward, you will get your name carved into a giant chunk of coal next Christmas. But for those who have donated uh, over the past several months, footage aka proof of uh, everybody's name carved into the giant coal chunk will be attached to a upcoming video within the next few days. So may God bless all of your lives. I will see you all around next time.